It is painfully obvious at this point that these influencers are being paid to shovel feedlot beef, pork, chicken, eggs down your throats. Low quality estrogen chemical filled animal products. It is disgusting and despicable from any perspective, but especially from someone like myself that's been following a high quality animal foods diet for seven years, consistently promoting the same message. High quality wild caught seafood, shellfish, raw quality dairy, pasture raised animal foods. You have Joe Rogan telling people he ate bacon and elk and he feels great yet he's injecting more TRT than Tyson Fury. You have Michaela Peterson saying beef was the only thing that cured her autoimmune disorder yet who knows how many nights she's spending at the bar every week guzzling down vodka. If you support these people, if you support grain-fed beef, you're supporting companies like Cargill, JBS, Tyson who are actively investing and producing plant-based burgers. They're all part of the big scheme controlling the food supply. These carnivore shills are pretending to be anti-vegan, pretending to be against this plant-based slop, but what they're doing is actually supporting it. I mean, I have to commend them. They're clever enough to convince the low IQ public that they are doing good. They're the controlled opposition, but as I've said many times, they are still supporting big agriculture, controlling the food supply, controlling you, dictating your choices, taking your health away with their corporate greed. The same companies that are selling grain-fed beef are making plant-based fake meat. Even some farms that are allegedly grass-fed collaborate with these big agricultural companies like General Mills. There's a reason you don't see these people telling you to support small business and local grass-fed farmers. Unless they're getting a check from them. Now we have popular YouTuber Will Tennyson going carnivore for a week. This is eerily similar to the Buff Dudes. Large influencer paid to follow a low-quality meat diet. And you would assume someone that's going to commit to a diet for a week would do a little bit of research, come across some more information about the diet. No, he just references the special interest corporate pawns, Corn Faker, Jordan Peterson, Joe Rogan, and that you should eat meat. Let's see how eating two pounds of estrogenic feedlot garbage makes him feel every day. What is going on guys, Will here, welcome to the video. As you guys can tell by the title, we're gonna be trying the carnivore diet for the next seven days. Will, what on earth is the carnivore diet? The carnivore diet is one of the most restrictive diets that you can do that contains only animal products, so no veggies, no fruit, no grains. You guys get the idea. Let me just wait for the vegans to leave the room. So why try the carnivore diet? So the carnivore diet is supposedly supposed to help in weight loss, mood issues, blood sugar regulation, and so much more. So we are gonna see what happens to me, my physique, my butthole, my toilet, that poor thing. So without further ado, let's get this video started. Okay, so I was driving home last night and I hit a rack food and I was like, you know what? Breakfast is served. So we have a 14 ounce rack. I'm kidding guys. I didn't actually take the raccoon home. So I'm kidding again. No raccoon made contact with my vehicle. So what we actually have in this cannibalistic serial killer looking meal is a 14 ounce flank steak only seasoned with salt and pepper. You can only use salt and pepper to season your food. At least that's all that I know. Um, I've looked online. I haven't seen anything else about other stuff alongside a uh, sparkling water. So you can only drink water, sparkling water and bone broth. Um, some people who do the carnivore diet say you can't have coffee, but I'm not even going to test it because I don't want to get any hate in the comments. So I'm going to do it as strict and as serious as humanly possible. So I'm going to try and take this 14 ounce flank steak down and let's go. So Will was clearly paged on the carnivore memo. Beef, salt, and water. Ooh Mantra of the carnivore monkeys. If he actually did research, he would have found that people use various spices, various seasonings, incorporate raw dairy beverages. Breakfast, check. Dry hypertrophy for the year, check. Um, I significantly undercooked that steak. Like it was still mooing going down my throat, which was kind of unsettling. Um, but overall, 14 ounces of flank steak at 9.30 in the morning is quite heavy. So I'm pretty confident I won't be hungry for a long, long time. See you in a bit. 
Update, I am in a moving automobile right now on my way for dinner. So the last time I ate was around 2.30. I had a, a pound of ground turkey and four whole eggs. Ever since then, I've been stuffed. I haven't even thought about food for the entire day. And it is going on 7.30. So safe to say, I'm gonna be in a calorie deficit for the day. A bowl of ground turkey and eggs. Yikes. You'll really feel the estrogen after eating that one, but it makes sense. There's plenty of ground turkey and eggs being thrown out on store shelves. Any supermarket you go into, they're not selling it. Got to convince some YouTube sheeple to poison themselves on feedlot animal foods so these big companies stop hemorrhaging money. For those of you that don't know, I'm constantly referencing estrogenic feedlot beef because some of the pesticides, particularly atrazine, that are sprayed on crops that are being fed to the animals translate directly to the meat and you're eating that estrogen filled meat getting a dose of estrogen every day. Um, I'm going to a steakhouse tonight because I feel like a steakhouse is like the only appropriate thing to do for a carnivore person because try going to a normal restaurant and ordering a meal and then say, excuse me, can you remove the sides and just put no seasoning on the meat and say it with a straight face. The server will probably take your order and then proceed to pull the fire alarm and then evacuate the building. So we are gonna stick with uh, the steakhouses this week. Um, as far as the washroom situation goes, nothing ground, I, I mean, guess I guess ass breaking to report. Um, so yeah, that's that. The scallops might be the only thing he's eaten all day which isn't full of agrochemicals. Bacon being one of the worst choices on that front. And the filet is a bit leaner, so probably less of the evils, but still not good. <clears throat> Morning of day number two and I feel interesting. Like I have this mental clarity, focus, alertness I have not experienced in a long time. Like. If you gave me chopsticks, I could probably catch a fly like Mr. Miyagi in The Karate Kid. But other than that, I actually feel quite sick. Like I feel like I'm on the cusp of throwing up every minute, which is not a nice feeling. And my stomach is really sore. Like I already know the protein farts are ready to make their debut, which is quite worrisome because it's only the morning of day number two and I still have all day today and then five more days. But anyway, um, on to breakfast. So nothing like a nice 16 ounce strip loin steak drenched in butter. I feel like it's gonna be really hard for me to like hit my calories, especially my maintenance calories during this challenge because like the thought of eating is like, I'm already put off of it and I know I still have five more days. So probably not to resort to fattier cuts of meat. So probably gonna head out, get maybe like a ribeye, like ground beef, like the 80, 20 stuff, or even if there's even like 50, 50, I'll, I'll probably do that. <laughs> So whether it was intentionally planned or not, he is going to consume fattier cuts of meat, which means more toxins and chemicals that are stored in the fat as well as more omega-6, but at least he's going to have a better energy metabolism compared to pure protein. Here's where I would argue it's probably healthier to eat white rice and lean grain-fed meat than eating... Drinking some bone broth right now. So bone broth and stock are actually not the same thing. Many people think that they are, but bone broth is simmered significantly longer than just traditional stock. And there's many health benefits to bone broth. One being it's very rich in vitamins and minerals. It's very good for your skin, hair, joints, nails, bones, everything it's supposed to help aid in weight loss, uh, your sleep, inflammation, gut health, antioxidants, the whole shebang. And to be quite honest with you, it's like the only warm drink that I can drink this entire challenge. And it's like the only thing that has the most resemblance to coffee. So that's pretty much why I am drinking it. You know, I do have the best skin, hair, nails out of all of the carnivores, but I guess that's not saying much because none of them have hair and they all look like their face is peeling off. Uh, and I mean, I've never drank bone broth. Uh, the only vitamins bone broth would have would be from the meat trimmings on the bone, perhaps an insignificant amount of B vitamins. If the broth was very fatty, you know, if you were drinking pure rendered marrow fat, then you might get some of the fat soluble vitamins, which could also be obtained from just eating the marrow itself. Collagen from the gelatinous tissue of the animal is not digested as collagen in the body your body turns it into amino acids. So you might as well eat a steak, you know, something less cooked, get higher quality protein. I have a whole video on bone broth if you wanna understand this further. It's a treat, not necessarily for nutrition. The reason so many people are pushing bone broth is because collagen, glycine, all of these powdered products are 
byproducts of the cattle industry that they need to sell. It is getting late. I'm not remotely hungry, but I gotta get dinner in. It is a little past 9.30. Been feeling like crap all day, very lethargic. Haven't really wanted to do much. Even getting my 10,000 steps was extremely difficult. So other than the steak, I had a nice carnivore salad consisting of chicken thighs and bacon. And for dinner, we were having some abstract food. So at first glance, it looks like vomit. But then if you squint your eyes and tilt your head 60 degrees to the left, we actually have some ground beef and whole eggs. So the ground beef that I am using is just 80-20. Typically would never have that. Usually go with the extra lean ground beef. But on this diet, they recommend the higher fat cuts of meat, as I mentioned earlier today, just to get the calories in. Chicken thighs, bacon, ground beef, whole eggs, super fatty estrogenic feedlot meats. He says he feels like crap. Very lethargic. I mean, yeah. That's what estrogen does to you. It's why they give it to cows. They get lazy and eat grass all day. They also recommend you have organ meat. Why? Because the organ meat is the most nutrient dense part of the animal, very rich in B vitamins and minerals. So if you didn't know that, now you do. So I'm gonna eat this and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. <clears throat> I never thought I'd say this, but I'm so put off food right now and I'm so happy that this is done. I don't even want to think about food and I don't even want to eat tomorrow. When you consume high omega-6 feedlot animal fat, it causes diarrhea. If you eat too much protein and not enough fat, it causes constipation. And yeah, Will, you will get stronger if you inject as much steroids as those carnivore morons. And it would certainly make up for the estrogenic meat you're eating. But since you're a natural, you don't have any exogenous testosterone to make up for your feedlot beef diet. So it is day number three and I just finished my first workout on the carnivore diet, but before I talk about that, I wanna talk a little bit about the washroom situation because I've had some interesting occurrences. So first one being is sometimes I need to put like my headphones on to listen to like Slipknot to get some motivation to like push one out because I'm like so backed up. And then I have other moments where like, I have to like clench my butt cheeks and beeline it to the washroom because it's gonna probably come out before I actually get my pants off. And it's basically like bathroom Hiroshima and I'm that's like not even, scratching the descriptive surface of what I mean. Um, so back to the workout, um, I was extremely tired. Like after like the first exercise, the bench press, my energy just went boom, obviously because of the low carbs, I'm not used to it. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't be like a good bodybuilder on the carnivore diet. There's many elite level athletes who use a carnivore diet, specifically Sean Baker. He's like a very big advocate of the carnivore diet. He's 50 years old and he's like a world record holding like an uh, indoor rower and he like deadlifts over 700 pounds and there's been many people like documenting the fact that after like around 30 days on the carnivore diet they feel like they're stronger than ever so it's definitely something i have to get used to over time but that was just my experience today well your gut bacteria is dying and this is something the other carnivores don't talk about whether it's because they don't understand the microbiome the carnivore diet or they don't have something to sell you your gut bacteria needs carbohydrates or you need to actually consume the bacteria itself. It's why our ancestors were usually consuming carbohydrates and ample amounts of fermented foods. I can't even begin to explain to you guys how I feel right now. Like, I don't, like, I'm not even trying to be dramatic, but I don't, I don't, actually don't feel like myself right now. Like, I feel super lethargic. I have like no motivation to go to the gym. Uh, my head hurts like tremendously, like severe headaches. Um, I'm very on edge and like, I get agitated very easily. Like if someone does something and it's not even like would piss me off normally, I'm just getting like, like angry inside and it, I just want to snap. So I'm kind of like staying away from people right now and it, it sucks, like it's such a bad feeling and like I'm seeing like mirages of like fruit and like other carbohydrates. Like I'm like craving carbs right now like nothing I've ever had before in my life. Like I've tried many other diets, like the, the OMAD, I've tried the keto, just a bunch of other stuff. But this one, like it's a whole new like, ball game. Like I'm, if I wasn't doing a YouTube video, no chance I'd be um, doing this right now. But anyway, first meal of the day on day number four, um, I'm not like ground beef and just beef, red meat. I'm so turned off of it right now. Not a chance I'm having it for breakfast. So I just have a couple whole eggs with uh, some cheese inside. So you can have some dairy on this diet. You can have, um, usually it's hard cheese and like heavy creams and stuff like that. Um, you can, if you want, have like yogurts, milks, soft cheeses, but it's not advised. Uh, so, I mean, hopefully, I'm like, I'm hoping by like days, like six, like I can start to feel a little bit like myself again, but uh, I'm not I'm not that hopeful. I, I'm definitely going through that like, kind of like withdrawal moment right now, but it, it's it's challenging. <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, as we said, this is what happens on a feedlot animal food diet if you're not injecting testosterone. You will literally feel the estrogenic atrazine after you eat it. I know a few hours ago I said I couldn't even bear the thought of having more red meat, but I had so much red meat in my fridge, I just have to use it and really wanna waste it. So with that said, for lunch I'm having beef two ways, in its minced form and then in its flank steak form. Um, at this point, like, Eating is not even fun anymore. I'm like a big foodie. I get excited to eat, but I have no more excitement towards food at all. Like this is just like eating it for the sake of just living. Um, these meals also just look extremely sad and like bland. Like I'm pretty sure 90 to 100% of the meals I've eaten so far this week, if a baby looked at it, they'd probably cry. So I can see why people lose weight on this diet because your willingness to eat just like drops dramatically. It is the end of the day and nothing has changed from this morning. Still feeling like absolute trash. Uh, I'm at 6,553 steps. Uh, and if you guys know me, I usually get 12 to 15,000 steps a day easily. I didn't even go to the gym today as well. That's just how tired I'm feeling. But I'm about to start watching that movie called My Friend Dahmer. It is the Jeffrey Dahmer documentary. I, I feel like it just makes sense to start watching it at this very moment in my life. I mean, I just feel like a cannibal this week. Um, also, for the first time on this challenge, I actually feel hungry. Uh, usually, just my like appetite has just been like suppressed the whole entire day, but I am feeling hungry. But there's nothing really to snack on on this diet. Like, I really, really, really want some fruit right now, but obviously I can't have it. And nothing is like, I can't just go upstairs and go like grab a freaking bison steak out of the fridge and start eating it as a snack. Everything just seems too heavy to eat as a snack. Sometimes you just want to have a snack and just like as a refreshing kind of thing to eat while you watch a show. But I got nothing to eat, which which sucks. So I'm not gonna eat sick. I as day five came around, it felt no different than day number four. I just felt terrible. I felt lethargic the whole entire time and I just felt constantly on edge. By the morning of day number six, I actually felt great. I had no headaches, I didn't feel lethargic, so I must have passed that adaptation phase of the diet. I guess the only thing that did change was the bathroom situation, it just got worse. And let's just say it kept me on my toes. Day number seven, I did not think this day would come. I am so happy, I'm feeling actually good today, feeling like myself, which is kind of nice. I don't really know if the struggles that I was going through the first couple days was due to the diet or the fact that I had no caffeine at all. I pretty much done two challenges in one week, so I'm super proud of myself for even getting to this point. In terms of the weight loss, I don't think I've lost weight. I mean, I haven't stepped on the scale yet. I will tomorrow morning, but I don't think I've lost that much weight other than the first day, days two to now. I've just been having high fatty meats and like it's a lot, it's like very small volume, but a lot of calories. Like this plate here of sausages for breakfast is 250 calories per sausage, so 1,000 calories just for this. So I mean, it's very easy to get the calories in, so don't expect too much weight loss. So throughout this challenge, I've been having the exact same supplements I normally would have on my typical diet, and that includes uh, five grams of creatine monohydrate every single day. I then take two capsules of cod liver oil, pretty much the same thing as just regular fish oil. The reason I take this specifically is for my skin condition known as keratosis pilaris. This is apparently the best thing for it. I also take uh, vitamin D. Um, so on this diet, you're pretty much getting all of your iron and zinc from the red meat. You're getting your vitamin D from the dairy products that you would have. But the one thing that's missing that specialists say that you must supplement with is uh, vitamin C, which we typically get with our fruits and veggies, but obviously we're not having fruits and vegetables on this diet. So I've been having 500 milligrams every single morning. Um, if I was doing this long term, I would definitely add in a multivitamin, probably a digestive enzyme because um, your digestive system just gets mangled. Cod liver oil is not the same as fish oil, not even close. I don't know why he would even say that. It has substantially higher vitamin A as well as vitamin D. And the problem with that specific brand is that it has artificial vitamin additives. It's not a natural cod liver oil. Well, if you're watching this, shoot me an email. I'll send you some of the fresh pressed cod liver gold that we have on Frankie's Free Range Meat. He said you get vitamin D from dairy, Absolutely not true. There's an insignificant amount of vitamin D in animal foods. You need to get your vitamin D from the sun. Vitamin C is contained in fresh meat, but grain-fed beef probably doesn't have nearly as much as higher quality animal foods. He offhandedly mentioned digestive enzymes without specifying betaine, HCL, pepsin, and oxbile. And I think it's dangerous to give advice to take enzymes 
because taking a broad spectrum digestive enzyme on a meat only diet is going to destroy your gut. You're going to literally kill all the bacteria in there. Last and final meal of this challenge. We are finishing exactly where we started. I cannot wait to wake up in the morning and have some fruit and vegetables. Like my God, like I want to do some R-rated things to some fruit and veg right now. As the days have gone by, like the bathroom situation has just gotten extremely sketchy. Like when Joe Rogan says he hasn't had a safe fart in like weeks, like I could totally sympathize with him. But anyway, for dinner, the last meal, we have four bison steaks. So quite a lot of meat. Um, I think one of the only pros of this challenge so far is I know how to cook a pretty damn good steak now. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> Okay guys, well that is gonna do it for the carnivore diet challenge. I wish I could say it was bittersweet that it's done, but it's not, it's just sweet. Like that was a disgusting amount of meat and I'm probably gonna go to vegan for a week to balance this shit out. But anyway, I am gonna go to bed soon. So I'll see you guys in the morning for the final weigh in. It is the next day, which means I am human again. So I came downstairs, had an apple and got excited. Something else got excited too. I mean, the way this week was going, I thought I was permanently damaged, if you know what I'm saying. So Will's PP wasn't working. Probably a combination of atrazine and all of his gut bacteria dying off. So he wasn't synthesizing nutrients needed to make testosterone. Healthy gut equals normal testosterone levels. So I stepped on the scale and I was 176.4 pounds. Started the challenge off at 177.2 pounds. So I only lost a total of 0.8 of a pound. So not even a pound, not much change. Like I said, very little volume of food for the amount of calories, especially when you're having high fat cuts of meat. It was just very easy for me to get the calories in. I don't know why someone would want to do this diet unless you have like very serious health conditions where you absolutely need to do it. I mean, it doesn't make sense to me why someone would want to do this. Like eating is such a social aspect of our lives. We always go out with friends and family to like restaurants and stuff. And to be so restricted to one food group, just blows my mind. And I feel like it must not be healthy. I don't know. There definitely hasn't been enough research long-term about the carnivore diet, but I just feel like balance with all micronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat is the best way to go in terms of health, in my opinion. To me, Will seems like an intelligent guy. I mean, he's a decent actor. He's convinced hundreds of thousands of naive people that he's the real deal. But Frankie boy sees through your stone cold dog shit. It's unfortunate that, you know, the sheeple just literally so easy to control. Drive them to the feedlot meat at the supermarket. So thank you guys for joining me. If you could please like the video, subscribe if you haven't. And above all guys, please share the video. You know, spread the message of what these paid influencers are doing. They're pawns of big agriculture. They don't realize how negatively they're impacting the health of people and how they're promoting the agenda that is gonna further decline our health and our happiness. If you guys wanna support me further, you can check out Frankie's Syringe Meat for high quality animal foods. You can go to Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. And you can go to frank-stefano.com for one-on-one -on -one health consultations, as well as a free carnivore diet meal plan. You guys have a good night.